Hey Sagittarius, thank you so much for checking out my channel here at Reflexive Moon Tarot. My name is Sarah and we are doing your reading for the new moon in Leo. So new moon, new month, new you with lots of fiery energy, which is definitely your forte. Uh, we are going to start off with some oracle to set the tone. And then we will get into a tarot reading and conclude with affirmations. So let's get the cards rolling here. Um, I mean, it's Leo season period right now. So lots of fixed energy that is associated with stability, determination, and... Uh, Persistence. Definitely persistence. Leos are very persistent. Sagittarians can be very persistent too. It's like, the, you know, all the fire signs are signs of action, right? Um, what else? I guess themes and significance for any new moon would be like to refresh your space, get rid of things that no longer serve you. Um, with Leo influencing the situation, you may find yourself wanting to express yourself or like find different ways to, new ways to express yourself. Um, Leo is affiliated with confidence, leadership, and like joyfulness, playfulness. Like Leos are always, I find Leos to be super fun to have around. Like they are kind of like Libras where they can be the center, like the life of the party a little bit. So, let's see here. Mm, mutable moon. Nothing yet is set in stone. Nothing is yet set in stone. So you could be dealing with a situation that you want to have happen or that you're like waiting for something. But I would say this card is coming through because um, it's important that you do not jump the gun. All right? Do not jump the gun. It's like, don't, it's like, don't pay for it unless the money's there. All right. That type of metaphor it could be real. It could be metaphorical, but there's something that's, you know, maybe you're, you're treating something like it's fixed, but it's not. You could be unhappy with something, you could be unhappy with an outcome. And I would say, like, don't fixate on that, right? Nothing is yet set in stone. Um, it could be an outcome with somebody that may have been a love interest, could be a family member. Either way, this person's a bit of a jackass. You may have realized that they were lying to you or that they just don't want to learn. You know, the Knight of Swords is a person who is like a senior student, a senior level student, right? Um, they're not quite at the, you know, major or general or general major or Colonel Sanders, something. They are, they're still in need of taking orders. This person is quite ornery. Um, they're often a know-it-all on some level. You may feel like you're at some type of loss with this individual, like they just like you just missed the mark. You're wondering what the hell happened with this guy or person, with this person. They're quite deceitful. They can be a Gemini or have a significant Gemini placement. Also Libra and Aquarius, but usually Gemini with the Knight of Swords. So again, nothing is yet set in stone. This person has an opportunity, I'm sure, to flip their switch. But let's see. The universe is telling you that you're unhappy. Clearly, we have the nine and the ten of cups reversed here. So you're not you're not happy about anything. There's nothing to even like on a secondary level try and celebrate. It's almost like you know, it's possible that the five of cups bad outweighs the good. But I don't see conflict here yet. We don't see conflict here yet. Let's check it out. We've got the Queen of Cups. 
So you could have a significant Pisces placement, Cancer, or Scorpio placement in your chart. Um, the Queen of Cups is very intuitive. She has a powerful intuition. She follows like gut instinct. Um, and she's very emotionally nurturing on many levels, able to be present to various situations. So subconsciously, you are fully capable of being that person. So maybe, um, maybe you need to root yourself in empathy with regards to this situation. And don't make any assumptions. Just empathize if you can. We have the Nine of Wands. So trying to protect yourself, protect all of your interests, projects. Um, you maybe you've been through a lot and you know you're uh, you've been through a lot, you have a lot of experience. Um, a lot of bumps and bruises from learning the hard way along the way. So the past, you've basically been learning how to sort of fall back after being on the front lines and just protect, protect the realm. All right. Okay, so the eight of swords reversed so moving into the future you're going to see a way out a way out of the situation this situation could be with this individual could be involving something else but there's going to be something that involves you freeing up your mind and seeing a way out of something maybe a way to reroute your path to connecting with your happiness i would say and not allowing it's like it's like detachment you know which is totally your forte, being Sagittarius. Like, let's be real. So, what about your attitude here? What's going on with your attitude? I'm, I'm liking this. I'm liking this Eight of Swords here, because you know, entrapment or being men mental entrapment is not is not something that we want to subject ourselves to, right? Like that. That's not how we win. Queen of Swords. <laughs> I think Scorpio got this one reversed in the same spot. But you got it upright. So, so your attitude is mint. It's fresh. It is a clear mind. Now, the Queen of Swords also knows that she's not perfect, even though she, you know, she may think that she's perfect because she continuously strives for perfection. I wouldn't say that she's super idealistic, but she is hard to please because she always knows that there's room for improvement. There's room to progress in some type of way with regards to things that, you know, that are controllable, right? So you can't control the weather, you can't control other people, but you can at least hope and aim for better outcomes, right? So... The Queen of Swords in your as your attitude is is really fresh. It's also um, really enriching of the mind. So you may find yourself doing a lot of teaching or just sort of cultivating um, a learning learning types of environments. You're and you always want to learn. You know that the more you learn, the more that you're able to teach others as well. So that's a really great approach to have. Um, and if you find yourself um, resistant to wanting to learn new things um check in with why that is the case and don't make any excuses just deal with the shit right that's all you can do that is all you can do because right now we live in a world where excuses do not have any space people do not have there's no space to take up for excuses. Like, nobody gives a fuck. And, like, it's a loss. It certainly is a loss. And I'm not saying that there aren't any warm and welcoming spaces that are willing to, like, hear. Maybe maybe you need to find yourself in a space where, you know, it's okay to have excuses and where people are willing to challenge you on that and call you in to seeing things differently and not rationalizing. Um, so, yes. 
disregard my cynical statements. Sometimes I just don't give up up and it shows. <laughs> but I do. I do care. Just a bit of a cynic, that's all. All right. Ooh, we have the star. So people see that you are, maybe you are very like idealistic on some level, but it doesn't like, it doesn't necessarily have to be the case. It's just, you really have a, a very powerful, um, sense of hope. You're quite balanced with what you give and what you take. And you have an understanding of, you know, of the universe that not a lot of people share. So your understanding of the world and the universe and our environment is quite, uh, it's kind of like an ancient understanding, you know, like it's like knowing it's that faith that we know we're made of star stuff, that we're all connected and that we're just like little tiny specks of dust in a greater scheme of things that we think we know some things about and, you know, do know a few things about but at the end of the day there is so much more there's like infinitely more that we don't know than what we do know <laughs> and it is so exciting as far as i'm concerned it is so exciting okay let's see what else so, star of the show. And like this star energy is also what influences you in your environment. So despite any negative circumstances with this, you know, knight of swords, for example, you, um, you, have ho you have hopes. Hopes that people will change maybe or you know, just hope that like you just know that things are still going to be okay even if it's not your, does not meet your expectations. Now, um, Aquarian type of energy is affiliated with the star. So you may have a significant Aquarius placement in your chart, or I would say that this Knight of Swords could also be an Aquarius. Um, what work is an issue for you. <coughs> getting things done is, is um, I would say not getting things done is your biggest fear. I don't know like what you're afraid of not getting done. And what, I would say, question, like, I would question what are the consequences that, that would result in your fear, like, in your, like, what are the consequences? What exactly are you afraid of? What is the outcome of, you know, the outcome of things not getting done? What does that look like? And why are you afraid of it? And then, you know, if you can map that shit out, you can probably come to some type of solution and also find yourself in a place where you're motivated a little bit more to get some things done. That may not be the case. It may be that you need assistance or that, um, you know, you just need to revamp your expectations entirely. That's yet to be determined. But I would definitely make sure that on an emotional level, you're keeping your your health game on point. Temperance reverse. So this is your card, Sagittarius. There is a lack of balance. Despite having this awesome Queen of Cup and Queen of Swords energy within your attitude and your subconscious, we have a lot of emotional intelligence. So your capacity is quite remarkable and brilliant. However, you're missing the mark with something. And I would say that it has to do with restraint. Um, so maybe you're overindulging in something that you need to kind of chill out with. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're consuming something. It just means that you need to like, like if you're constantly feeling and expressing yourself, for example, it may not be welcomed. Maybe you need to ask consent first. Or if you are, I don't know, if you're too detached, you know, maybe you need to connect with folks. I just saw 444 on the clock. So, I 
I just want to look up temperance for a minute. Give me one second. I feel like there's more than meets the eye. Now, this book doesn't have reversals. It's the Fat Folks Tarot. It's, like, freaking awesome. So you can catch me using this deck on TikTok. Go check it out. Uh, what else we got going on here? Temperance. That's what I'm looking for. Temperance. Oh, my gosh. I missed it. What? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Adaptability and mindfulness. Okay. So it is affiliated with excess, chaos, disassociation. All right. So maybe you have some ADD issues or like some type of neurological something that you could use to do some exercises and connect a little bit um, or just refrain from spaces that will distract you which can be really tricky you really have to be transparent and you also have to know yourself um, it requires a lot of discipline so thank you fat folks tarot for making one of the best tarot books ever and let's conclude let's let's clarify this a little bit first this outcome we don't just want we want balance, right? So people see that as within your capability, within your environment. And your environment, it sounds like you have the resources possibly to be balanced. So what is it that you can access? And I would say, how can you volunteer your time and be a little bit more generous? Or how can you see that maybe you are giving too much of yourself, which could be the reason why you need to restrain from some things and do you but less not too much all right let's see here i mean it could also mean that you might be a little bit cheap about something so maybe you need to consider like um like if you have if you have quite a few resources you may want to donate um you may want to regularly donate to a cause uh, if not, though, you can always donate your time or at least um, some energy towards a cause by promoting it. Like there's so many things that you can do that will um, show that you are in solidar solidarity with um, any group of people that you that you empathize with and want to serve in some type of way, serve their cause in some type of way. So. That's, that's all entirely up for you to decide and to do your own research and figure out what it is that you want to connect with. Okay, and also do your research when it comes to where you're giving your money to because there's a lot of places that have foundations that are just end up, you know, being like some big ass fat bank account for a rich person that doesn't want to tax their money, all right? So just know that, it's real. Okay. <laughs> this is interesting but i love it all right your brain speaks total fuckery unless you turn your soul on <laughs> so what are you disconnecting from a little bit here all right what is like what are you disassociating from maybe you need to like be around what it is that you love instead of i don't know retreating um okay a human brain left unattended doesn't shut down. It goes berserk with bullshit thoughts that turn into bullshit actions. Ego will do its job of judging, separating, and accumulating things to define who you are without any help from you. But the soul? The soul needs your attention to be heard over that loud-ass ego. There's a reason most truly successful people meditate, read inspiring books, focus on gratitude and are of service to others in some way. So meditation, like maybe that's the service that you need to do for yourself. Um, it turns their soul on. And that makes them way better leaders, problem solvers, and functional humans. It also makes them way more fun to be around. So simple acts of gratitude, praying, there's so many things that you can do. The opportunities, the options are endless. 
All right, let's check out affirmation. Ooh, we got the seven of cups. So we are, we are not being indecisive. We are being decisive. Here we go. I am creating feel. Oh, repeat after me if you wish. I am creating feeling filled visions of success, wealth, power, sensuality, wisdom, adventure, and spiritual growth. I use these fantasies to deepen my emotional commitment to achieving my dreams. I sort through my desires and I carefully choose those I wish to support with my gifts and abilities. I am careful to maintain a balance between fantasy and reality. I use fantasy to build my motivation, increase my focus, and clarify my true purpose. All right, Sagittarius, that was such an awesome read. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. Um, if this resonates, please do hit that like and subscribe button, share it if you wish as well. I love all of the support that I receive from you. It really helps the growth of my channel and I really appreciate you. So take it easy and we will catch you next time. Bye for now. Wow.